Hi, I'm Jeff Stokes. Welcome to Jeff's Daily Dose of Encouragement. Today, I want to encourage you concerning the key to peace and joy. In Romans chapter 14, verse 17, it says, The kingdom of God is not food and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. The key to experiencing peace and joy in our lives is to do with the first word which is to walk in righteousness now apart from feeling loved which we all want to be loved I think one of the main things in life that people want is happiness contentment they want to be happy and content with their lot but it doesn't come through having money or having a nice house or having a nice girlfriend or boyfriend or having the right spouse in life or anything like that. Those things can help, but in and of themselves, they don't bring that peace or that joy or that contentment. It comes from having righteousness with God or being in right standing with God all your days now just to preempt this a bit it is a it is a process it's not something that happens instantly in our lives but true righteousness comes and true peace and joy comes from firstly having faith in Jesus Christ one of the first things we need to deal with before we can experience peace and joy is to deal with any guilt in our lives guilt from past transgressions and the way that it's set up in God's kingdom is that any transgression or sin we call it the only way that sin can be dealt with is that something or someone has to die and its blood has to be shed and the Israelites used to sacrifice animals and then shed their blood for for the sins of for their sins but also people under the law that the Jews were under under the law of Moses if they committed certain sins they had to die so and the animal that died had to be spotless without any blemish without anything and so god because that's the only way that god's wrath towards sin could be appeased and so in order to deal with that another way and to stop having to do this constant sacrificing all the time and because people in of themselves could not keep laws and things like that God decided to send his only begotten son who in the beginning it says in one in, in John 1 in the beginning was the word and the word was, was was with God and the word was God so he sent forth his word his only begotten son because the sacrifice to be a sacrifice and he made him to be flesh and he became Jesus the Christ the word became flesh and dwelt among us that's John 1 14 because the man had to be perfect because none of us has ever lived a perfect life not one person in the world has ever lived has not committed sin so God had to send his own son once for us to be the sacrifice for our sins and he did that because one as I said he was perfect but number two because Jesus said in another place there that he had the power to lay down his life and he had the power to take it up again the key was that Jesus could come and be sacrificed but then that wasn't the end of the story he could go back to his place where he came from which was heaven but this time not as just the word of God but 
as a as a totally transformed man and raised back up to heaven and be seated back at the right hand of God. And then what that does is that gives us hope. Well, yes, that our sins can be kept forgiven, and there is no other there is no other system on earth or religion that can deal with past transgressions. Only God through Jesus Christ can deal with that and he did deal with that over 2,000 years ago when Jesus was crucified on a cross and buried in a tomb for three days and then rose again from the dead. But secondly, it gives us hope that we too can receive through faith in Jesus Christ the same spirit that raised that, that, that lived in Jesus when he lived, but also that same spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead will also raise us up at any given time and we will at at sorry at god's appointed time and then we will also have resurrected bodies like him now that whole situation there of the work of the cross deals with the guilt and also gives us hope of eternal life and that is the starting point for having right standing with god and then having peace and joy. And then after that, what happens is that we receive the Holy Spirit. And then we, he teaches us to live in the right ways of God. And as we gradually learn more and more consistently to walk in God's ways, we will experience that peace and that joy that comes from knowing God. It, it says that Jesus became sin for us that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. So what happens is that as we walk after the spirit, the righteousness side of things gets fulfilled by his power in us and then we experience the peace and the joy that comes from God because we're doing the right thing. So if you want to experience peace and joy, then you need to confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and then you will be saved from your sins. You'll be in right standing with God and if you can begin that journey of learning to have true peace and true joy and true what they call happiness that's it's partly what being blessed means it's being happy and fulfilled yet that's the only true way it's it's an eternal way to do it through trying to do it through finding things that satisfy you will only give you temporary temporary relief if anything at all and then it says whosoever shall confess that jesus is the son of god god dwells in him and he in God and then God the Holy Spirit lives his life out through you and as you surrender more and more and listen more and more to his voice and obey what he's telling you to do you can experience the peace and the joy that comes you don't have a past to keep looking back at all the time feeling guilty about what you've done we do have memories but they don't need to bog you down and hold you and bind you anymore. You can move on with your life and you can live it in such a way that you're happy with who you are. You're happy. And as you go on in life, you will learn more and more about who God is, the things he likes and he doesn't like, the things that he says are not good for you and the things that are good for you. And you will find that sometimes you might think that there's, there's things that you've been doing and they're fine, but actually they're really not really what God had in mind for you. And when you find what he really had in mind for you, you'd be much happier doing those things than you were before. So that is my in encouragement for you today, is to experience, how to experience peace and joy is by living right and the only way you can live right is through 
faith in Jesus Christ and knowing God, having your sins forgiven, and then following his chosen path for your life. God bless you. Have a great day.